Hi, it's uh, Latza with uh, TechPV again. Um, I've been promising for a while that I'd eventually do my uh, review on a Cyborg RX. Uh, a bunch of people have probably already seen me out uh, on the forums saying that this is probably the best gun that you're going to get, blah, 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 blah. Uh, is it the best gun you can get? Probably not. But um, I'm really enjoying my Cyborg RX. Uh, I consider it to be a very good gun, uh, especially for its price class and what it's selling for used. Um, so I'm going to discuss uh, things that I like about it, things I don't like about it, quickly run through the marker, um, you know, how you're going to maintain things, how easy it is. You'll see that it's actually really, really easy. And um, explain a little bit of why I actually like this gun. Um, so I was lucky and I got, um, you know, the original case. As you can see, um, it says Cyborg on it. Other side's got... MacDev. Um, it's not a real sturdy case. Uh, it's not like the metal or plastic ones that you get with an Ego or anything like that. But it's still really good protection. Um, you're definitely not going to scratch your marker or really destroy anything in it. It's just not quite as solid as uh, some of the other ones. Uh, one thing I do like, it's a zip up. Um, a lot of the Ego cases, uh, especially from like the, the 08s and stuff, the clasps would always get screwed. You have to kind of press them in and they would... I, I don't know, every single Ego 8 that I've ever seen in the case, the case always had one latch that just would not latch. So um, it's nice to have a zipper. Uh, zipper's less chance of messing it up. Anyway, open it up. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty basic case. Um, a little bit smashed because of the pops they say I put on it, but uh, uh, you know it's good protection. Everything sits really well. Even the lube is held very secure. Um, keys have a little bit of movement room, but it's not going to be clanking around or hitting anything. Uh, they have a full color manual. Uh, mine's full of paint. Uh, yeah, it's a manual. Um, I prefer to read them electronic anyway, so it doesn't really matter if those come with me. Um, came with a really, really soaked and nasty uh, barrel condom, which I never plan to use. So anyway, I'll start out with the matchstick barrel because I really don't like it. Um, as everybody that really knows a lot about paintball, or even a little bit about paintball, or even occasionally visits TechPB will know, uh, the barrel doesn't really effect too much other than, uh, you know, as long as it's not a completely crap barrel, you haven't scratched the piss out of the inside, um, all modern barrels are going to be basically the same accuracy. Uh, so these will be affecting, you know, the length will be uh, how easy it is to point, um, how much sticks out, that, you know, all things that you can get used to, but a longer, uh, a longer barrel is, you know, it's going to make it easier for you to control a bunker, but more difficult for you to play tight and stuff like that. A lot of people say it's easier to point with. Um, but the length on it, I believe this is a 14 inch, uh, so n nothing really bad. Um, even if it's a 16 inch, I don't consider that to be too long, even though a lot of people do. But um, the main reason I don't like this thing, not because it's a large bore, you know, it's a 689, uh, get the focus here, 689 stock. Um, the main thing I don't like is the porting that's on it. So as you can see, the porting, I mean, I don't really have a barrel up here to compare it with, but it's got four rows of porting, two here and then two here. Uh, and the porting's really, really, really small. Um, I have a picture floating around uh, that I posted for, you know, other people comparing it to the Vanguard barrel, which is the Lucky, uh, up against the Bob Long barrel, the uh, Deadly Wind, um, the Disruptive, and uh, maybe another barrel. And it just has ridiculously small porting on the uh, matchstick barrel, which makes the gun sound really, really loud when actually the gun's pretty damn quiet, uh, especially when you consider that it's a stack tube poppet. Um, it's quieter than the Victory when they're both using the same barrels. I have a shooting video um, with this being shot at the exact same time as a Victory with the, you know, the same Deadly Wind barrel on it. Uh, and the victory pings, whereas this one just kind of chuffs, um, and the victory was just louder. So uh, it was a shocking day, but that's the way it goes, you know? But when I had this barrel uh, on this gun, and I put it up against the Ego 11, 
the Eagle 11 is quieter because the shaft barrel is actually decently corded. So uh, I don't like the stock barrel. If you don't care about the sound signature, then pff, hell, it's a barrel. You know, barrel's barrel. But uh, if you care about sound signature, I'd definitely switch out the barrel. Um, I'm just going to get the case moved out of the way here. Uh, you know, it came with militia lube um, and then a set of keys. Pretty standard. It's decent packaging, nothing over the top, but definitely better than some places. I'm sure it came with spare parts as well, but I didn't buy this new, so I didn't get that. <laughs> um, the next thing that I don't like about the RX is uh, the trigger, the stock trigger. Um, is it hard to walk or anything like that? Not really. It's not, I mean, I'm not going to complain about it too bad. Um, the thing that I don't like about it is, uh, first off, it doesn't have much of a swoop on it or anything. It's a f fairly flat trigger. But if you see, it's really super thin. And it, let's see if I can get it to zoom in here a little bit. Uh, it's just really sharp edges along. They didn't curve it. They just kind of made a, you know, they just kind of, I don't even know what you call it, just angled it, you know? Um, and the bottoms are very sharp, actually. Um, so I don't know. I just don't like the trigger. Uh, the bearing isn't the worst. Um, but really, just the feel on the trigger, I like a trigger that is just rounded. You know, most triggers that are really nice feeling triggers have that rounded front. Um, it sits really nice in the fingers. And I can feel this even through gloves. You know, when you're hitting it, you feel it's this sharp edge. Because I don't hit like this in the front. And even if I did, I would still feel these flat edges. But, you know, you're usually kind of hitting it at an angle. And you're hitting, you know, even though I have it slanted here, you seem to be hitting right on that ridge on the angle. And uh, I didn't like it. It wasn't very good geometry. It didn't feel nice. Um, I think bounced like freaking crazy, especially when I didn't have a spring in it. So, um, I don't know. I didn't like the stock trigger. I would definitely suggest that anybody that's going to pick up a Cyborg RX switch that thing out with a uh, Violent. Um, I don't know why they put such a bad trigger on it. They still have bad triggers in them. Uh, or Mac Dev in general, I mean. Um, I don't like the triggers that they've had on any of their guns. So, um, yeah, it's a shame. I think that they could have done a lot better if they would have given it a better barrel and a better trigger of stock. Um, so anyway, you know, I've got the violent trigger on it. It's very nicely curved. Let me try to get it up there. Yeah, it's perfectly curved around. It's nice and smooth. There's no hard edges. Um, it's a little bit sharp in the corners, but I don't plan on hitting that far down anyway. Uh, it's nice and snappy. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I like the violent triggers in general, but it was a really, really great day when I got that thing on my uh, RX. Um, next up, the, uh, the ASA, the stock ASA that they have on these things. A lot of people like them. Um, I don't really... It's, it's really nitpicking, so I mean, I, most people will know that I complain a lot. Uh, I really nitpick the shit out of a lot of things that most people don't really care about, but I care. <laughs> so anyway, it's a macro line out the front. A lot of people like that. That way you don't have anything coming out the sides. Uh, a lot of people just want that nice, smooth section here. And then when you're, you know, when you're switching hands, there's just nothing for you to get caught up on. You see? Um, so... That is a point in its favor. The downside is, is even though it's macro out the front, and even though it has, you know, similar to what a lot of people are used to in oops uh, type uh, twist knob and stuff like that, you know, it twists fine. It's not really difficult. Even when you have pressure, it's not that bad. But the problem is, is the way that this thing works, you'll see that there's two things on each side. Oh, sorry, I got tendonitis on my shoulder, so I have a little bit hard time uh, lifting up my shoulders right about now. But anyway, so it goes in this kind of slot groove and it just slides back and forth. I don't know how well you can see this, but anyway. It slides back and forth and has an O-ring on each one. So basically, um, when, the, when this thing is sitting in the backwards position, uh, the pin in there is uh, also back. You know, assuming that there was air to push it back. And then as you screw in the uh, the cap, it pushes this thing up, which then shoots out the pin. Uh, the problem being 
is even though this works, um, when you're screwing this in, right as it hits that, and it's, it would probably be about right here, right when it hits um, this, uh, this little pin thing that uh, moves forward, it engages your tank pin. You know, this thing comes out just enough to where it engages your tank pin, but as you can see, the O-rings haven't gone quite far enough forward in the slot to actually block off air. So if I had a tank hooked up to this right now, and I put it right there, this thing would just leak air. You know, it purges out those sides and it would just leak air and leak air. It would drain the entire tank if I just sat it there. Now if you're screwing in fast, it's not a real big deal. You just get a quick pfft. Scares the shit out of people in the pits every single time. Uh, so <laughs> I think that it's kind of annoying. Um, but the, the thing that I don't like is if you're sitting there spinning like this, if you stop at just that perfect spot, it just leaks until you get to the next one. So you have that quick and then you get it locked up. Again, it's uh, nitpicking. Uh, it's not a lot of wasted air. I don't think it's really going to affect too much. But a lot of people, like I said, I, if I'm sitting in the pits, I'm working my gun, I'm just going to gas it up. I always have somebody that jumps and spins around. What the hell's going on, you know? So um, I just didn't like it. Uh, I love the, the pops, um, which as a lot of people know is off the Ego 11, the GO2. Uh, it's just so easy to use. There's no leaking. It's just, yeah, like it. <laughs> so since I figured I'd be sticking with this gun for a while, um, I managed to get a pops and a trade. So why the hell not smack it on there? Um, also on uh, the gun, other things I don't really like, the, the grips are still good. They're nice and flat. They have a little uh, soft rubber finish on them. Um, the wraparounds, which most people will know, I hate panel grips. Uh, so it feels good in the hands. I wish I had a swell, but what are you going to do? But the main thing that I don't like about them, you see these old pair of grips. Uh, you can probably see in here this, uh, man, there we go, a little bit better like. Uh, once it gets nicked, you know, once these, uh, this little plastic, oh, I'm sorry, this uh, rubber coating gets a small nick in it, it just kind of peels off uh, and it reveals a hard plastic underneath and it looks, I think, really unsightly. Um, it's shiny plastic on the inside, so it shows up, it looks almost like you've dropped tar on it. Um, so I don't like the way it looks. Uh, it'll just continue to peel and I think that if the rubber was just a little bit thicker or if they had a little bit less plastic in it, uh, I would have been a little bit more happy. Um, but again, this is nitpicking. I'm just saying what I don't don't like about the gun, which isn't a hell of a lot, so I gotta nitpick this uh, nitpick the small stuff. Um, the gun shoots really smooth. Again, for a stack to pop it, I'm not saying that it's a spool or anything like that, unless you're putting it up against DP, but what are you gonna do? Um, you know, it's not as smooth as, as a victory, but it's definitely not too far off. Um, again, I think that has more to do with the fact that the victory just isn't smacking a pop-it valve. I, I, don't get me wrong, it is hitting a problem valve, but not in the same way, not with the same forces, not with the same blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so I just don't feel that clink, 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 uh, which the cyborgs do have, but um, not nearly as bad as, say, an Ego. Uh, it's smoother than a Vice, uh, therefore obviously smoother than a G6R, um, G6R, um, or, you know, whatever else you like. Um, it's... Other than the Creed, which I put about the same spot, it is the smoothest stack hook tube pop that I've ever shot, um, without a doubt. Uh, so that's definitely in its favor. Um, like I said, quiet, quieter than the Victory. Um, quite possibly, other than the Creed, the quietest stack tube pop it. Um, it's not as quiet as an Axe. Uh, the Axes are stupid quiet, actually. Them and the Minis. No matter what anybody says, the Minis are actually really damn quiet. Um, so yeah, a lot of people complain about the feed neck, they think it sticks up a little bit too high, I don't think so. They don't like that there's a little slit back here, uh, they're afraid that there's going to get dirt in it or something. Again, I, I haven't had a problem, I'm assuming most other people don't have a problem with it. So, um, again, that would be a nitpick thing, but I don't really see any real problem with it. Uh, would I switch it out with a VX if I had a VX uh, feed neck laying around? Yeah, if it matched the gun, probably, 
just for fun to say what's uh, VX on it, but not anything I'm going to pay 40 bucks for. <laughs> so anyway, um, just do a quick uh, discussion on it. I have a gold bolt in it. Um, I have the V2 rammer, which basically everybody else does. I'll explain what that is later. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's a, the violent trigger, pops, uh, but the rest is stock. Um, the Cyborgs come stock with a um, OLED board, which is manufactured by Tadao. Uh, it is running malicious soft, not the Tadao software, but it is still a, uh, a board manufactured by Tadao. It has a USB plug, um, but you can't you know, do screen designs and stuff like you would typically do with Tadao's. Um, but it still allows you to update the firmware if, if they would ever come out with new firmware updates. Um, and it's just, I guess, nice to have. Uh, got all the modes that you would typically want to use, uh, all the settings that you're used to, everything else. Um, try to get this closer in here. You know, it has a fairly detailed uh, description on everything that's going on. Uh, you know, mode, eye status, battery level, um, you know, whatever your, uh, your uh, BPS is and stuff like that. Not that it's accurate, not anybody gives a shit, but it's there. Uh, they also come stock with laser eyes. Uh, again, I, I don't really care about laser eyes. Uh, I know some people do. Yeah, it's nice to know that your eyes are working, but I've never really seen the point in actually buying laser eyes unless you have to. Yeah, if you're going to replace eyes, why not? They're only a couple extra bucks, but uh, I've never seen the point in really getting laser eyes. So anyway, I'll get into the gun. This is going to be a breakdown like I typically do uh, with markers or with my other two videos that I've done. So um, I'll do a, my version of a quick run through, which as everybody knows is stupid long. Um, I'll start off by removing the bolt. One thing that you'll notice, um, a little bit unique to the Cyborg, is that it has an enclosed um, bolt. It doesn't have the pin that sticks up like you would typically see with the Timmys and the, uh, the Egos and stuff like that. Um, their reasoning on that is uh, the, that those other guns that are a little bit more open that have the pin allow dirt and debris to get in there which could cause reliability issues and such. Um, I call it a gimmick. Um, you know it's a cool design but uh, it's <laughs> that they're gonna try to pawn off that it's you know a, another gun would be less reliable or whatever because it's exposed I have to say is bullshit because as most people know Egos and Temmies and the Legend and other stack two poppets are considered the most reliable guns out there. Um, and what do they all have in common? They all have a pin sticking out the top with uh, an exposed bolt. Uh, I don't know anybody that has problems. I know a lot of people that are sliding around in dust and dirt. Uh, live in Texas. Nobody complaining there. Uh, so that argument that it somehow makes it more reliable for that, um, I don't buy into. But it's still a cool little thing. So anyway, um, you just kind of twist it and... Out it comes. You have a bolt sleeve along with the bolt. The bolt sleeve does not do anything except for act as a little case. Um, you can see it has this little, maybe you can't see how dark are we, it has this kind of little zigzag thing. So you stick in the bolt with the pin, turn it, and then it kind of sits there. And then when it, the gun's firing, it goes back and forth. So anyway, like I said, just to cover, nothing you need to really clean unless you wanted to. You know, it's never a bad idea to just kind of stick your finger in there and rub off whatever it is. Uh, I never lube the inside of that thing. I don't think it should be needed at all. Uh, no O-rings, nothing to really worry about. Uh, like I said, got a gold bolt. Um, makes it a little bit more efficient, they say. Uh, again, I don't know about that. Uh, here's a stock bolt up against it. One thing that you will notice, hopefully, if I can get the camera here. Um, the front section of the gold bolt, which is, god damn it, which is this one, um, it's got a little bit more of a ramped face. You know, this stock bolt is really, god, I hate the thing on the, focus, not on the mat down here, there we go. Uh, it's got kind of a sharp, uh, front on it, uh, which I don't really, you know, does it clip balls? Yeah, I'm sure, but it's, I just like to have it more of a, a ramped face like that. Uh, it also cups the ball a little bit better. As you can see, the gold bolt has... 
God damn it. You piece of shit camera. There we go. It has this uh, kind of like cupped face so that the ball can lay in it. Whereas the stock has flat. Um, so yeah, it's not really any big deal. The stock one also takes, you know, two O-rings up there. Whereas the gold bolt only has the one. Um, weight difference, they're about the same. So whatever. I picked up a gold bolt anyway. Why the hell not? Uh, so that's a bolt. Uh, what do you want to say about a stock tube pop it bolt? It's, you know, one O-ring on this thing or two if it's stock. The O-rings don't even matter. You pop them off and the gun would still shoot fine. So, you know, it wouldn't leak or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just going to wipe it down and put on some extra lube anyway. But you really don't need to. You can run them dry. I know a lot of people do. You could use oil on this if you wanted, but I like to use militia lube. You really do not need much. Just kind of barely wet your finger, stick it on there, and then just right here in the front. I know some people do their, uh, you know, the cut-ins for the detents. Uh, I don't know how needed that is on these type of guns because it's not a, the finger one, which you would want a little bit less uh, friction on. Uh, even the ball, you know, it has a ball-type detent. Uh, sure, maybe it reduces a little bit of wear, but it doesn't really matter to me. Either way, just dry off my fingers on them and set that off to the side. Like I said, it's a stack tube boppet bolt. Nothing special about it. Um, next, uh, I'll get into the rammer and the poppet. Uh, one thing I really love about the cyborg is basically everything is toolless. Everything that you're going to need to get to often. So you have the rammer cap here. Just kind of grab onto it. Oh man, my hands are covered in grease. There we go. Uh, spin it a couple times. 